Hello YouTube and welcome to Hidden Hacks. Today we're going to use 12 shift registers to control 30 common anode RGB LEDs using only 3 pins from an Arduino Nano. We're also going to use the shift PWM library to see what examples are included inside it. Also, I'm not going to talk about how to wire or connect stuff to the shift register since I have already done that on my previous video, click here to check it out. The connections are pretty much just the same, RGB LEDs just need more resistors, wires, and breadboard space. Consider this a follow-up or an update. And as always, all the necessary links will be provided on the description down below. Let's go! Here are the things that we need. A lot of jumper cables. I haven't used this many, I just bought more than I needed for future projects. A few breadboards. You can just use one full-sized MB102 if you are just curious and wanted to try it out. 30 pieces of common anode RGB LEDs. This is a pack of 100, again for future projects. A few hookup wires and resistors. An Arduino Nano and 12 pieces of 74HC595N 8-bit shift registers. And of course, a data cable, a pair of tweezers if you have one, and to power the LEDs and second set of shift registers, a 5 volt 3 amp DC power supply. I am not sure if this is overkill or something since the LEDs will be using PWM and uh, I don't know how to calculate the voltages for that. But I needed to use a separate power supply to lessen the load that my Arduino Nano would need to provide. Now, the shift PWM library is available for download on GitHub. This one is created by Mr. Elko Jacobs. There he is, thank you sir. And the example that we will use is this one, the shift PWM RGB example. After downloading and extracting the zip file into our Arduino libraries folder, let's open up the IDE. Click on file, examples, look for shift PWM master, then click on shift PWM RGB example. And since this library will be using hardware SPI, I'm not going to touch anything. But what does that mean, hardware SPI? According to Arduino.cc, Serial Peripheral Interface or SPI is a synchronous serial data protocol used by microcontrollers for communicating with one or more peripheral devices quickly over short distances. With an SPI connection, there is always one master device, usually a microcontroller, which controls the peripheral devices. Typically, there are three lines common to all the devices. MISO, master in, slave out, the slave line for sending data to the master. MOSI, master out, slave in, the master line for sending data to the peripherals. And the SCK, or serial clock, the clock pulses which synchronize data transmissions generated by the master. We have actually encountered those pins on Arduino project number 2 when we use an RFID module to turn our computer on or off using a relay. Click here to check it out. Now I'm going to change the latch pin number to 4 and the number of shift registers to 1 for testing. After using a few LEDs for testing, let's proceed on to the wiring phase. <sighs> Okay, here's the first set of shift registers. The data in and data out pins are already connected to each other. I only used 6 on the first set though, not 7. Ground pins are already connected to the ground rail of the breadboard. MR pins or master reset are connected to the positive rail. OE pins or output enable are connected to the ground rail. VCC pins are also connected to the positive rail. The 5 volts and ground pin of the Nano connected to the upper positive and ground rail of the breadboard. The other Arduino ground pin is not supposed to be connected to anything. This was a mistake that I have fixed off cam. Latch pins and clock pins. Okay, connect the wires like this, 1, space, 3, space, 3, and so on. 1 for the jumper wire of Q0 where LED pin 1 is connected, space for the anode pin of the LED, 3 for Q1, Q2, Q3 connections where pins 3 and 4 of the first LED and pin 1 of the second LED is connected. Add the resistors, these are all 200 ohms. Then the LEDs. The red hookup wires are connected to the anode pins of the LEDs and to the positive rail of the breadboard where the power supply is connected.
Now for a demo using only 6 or the first set of shift registers. This is the 1 by 1 fade in and fade out of all outputs. As you can see, it goes from red to green then blue. Fade Nation! Fade in and fade out of all outputs. Fade in and out two outputs at a time. Hue shift. The flickering is because of my camera, by the way. Alternate LEDs in 6 different colors, red, green, blue, orange, turquoise, and purple. Not sure why it's a bit different than the second half though. Random LEDs to random colors. Fake VU meter. And the last one, RGB LED Rainbow. Now, the same effects but with the diffuser. Well, sort of. Alright, let's connect the second set of shift registers. Now for the same effects but using 12 shift registers and 30 RGB LEDs. Why would you do that? I don't understand. I just, I just don't understand. Super stoked, you know? To be honest, 6 shift registers are enough for a demo, but I wanted to find out what would happen if I used all my ICs and I kind of miss watching Mythbusters. If you guys are familiar with it, you know their credo. If it's worth doing, it's worth it's overdoing. Worth doing, it's worth it well it is, so I did. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. Maybe.